All right, thank you very much, Greg. You know, we saw protests into the wee hours of the morning in North Texas. We could see more today. Got a lot to update you on. Uh, I got a lot to update you from on what happened overnight as we start our coverage in Dallas this morning, where Chris Sadegi is. We saw folks on the Margaret Hunt Hill Bridge until the wee hours of the morning, Chris. Many of them ended up detained. Yes, Mark, because there is that curfew in downtown Dallas and the surrounding area, the protests have been pushed a little bit further out. They began at the Frank Crowley Courts building last night, but then eventually marched over to the Margaret Hunt Hill Bridge, where things never turned violent. However, it did take a heavy Dallas police presence to remove them from the bridge. The county courthouse, the courts building, is county property and not subject to the city of Dallas curfew. There was an arrangement to allow the protest to happen until 10 o'clock, but then the group began to march before that onto the bridge, and around 9 o'clock, Dallas police tell us they used smoke to block them from crossing that bridge. They also detained 300 people on the bridge, but we understand most of them were just put on a bus to be brought back to the courts building and not arrested during our 10 p.m. newscast last night. County Judge Clay Jenkins spoke live with our Rebecca Lopez about how the county tried to accommodate protesters after the city implemented the curfew. A peaceful protest, but we want people to do it safely. And, um, you know, we uh, I can't do much to help them uh, other than, you know, uh, well, I can't do much to help them when they're off county property, but we, we, we value pr uh, peaceful protest um, and we want to protect that for everyone. And Jenkins said he spoke with the sheriff about a curfew for the county that would extend an hour and a half past the city curfew for the remaining week or so. He said so that would make the curfew 8.30 instead of 7 o'clock on the county side. Dallas Mayor Eric Johnson said that he did have some concerns about how police handled the situation on the bridge last night, but he would wait until he got more information from them today before making any judgments. Governor Greg Abbott also arrives in Dallas today to speak with the local police chiefs and mayors about how the state response can be used to help them. There were a lot of protests in several cities across North Texas last night. One of them was Fort Worth, and that's where Hannah Davis is live with how that one happened. Yeah, good morning, Chris. In Fort Worth and all across Tarrant County, we saw several protests, some that escalated and others that created powerful moments of unity. Let's take a look at what we saw across the county. Here's the, the picture in Arlington where police say demonstrated demonstrations started out peacefully but then took a turn late last night into the early morning hours when some of the people busted out windows at this Walmart then faced off with police. Arlington PD said there was also vandalism and spray painting and cars racing around in some areas. In total, six people were eventually arrested according to Arlington police. Meanwhile, in Fort Worth, tensions, they were high as a curfew was in place after a difficult weekend. But Monday's protest was something different altogether, a moment sticking out as an example of unity. You can see a Fort Worth police officer in the middle of the crowd who stops and then kneels in solidarity, connecting with the men and women there. Protesters then come over and they embrace that officer. It is a moment that is sticking out and making the rounds on social media. Now, we do know there was a curfew in place here in Fort Worth for 8 p.m., but the protest went till about 9.45. But it really looked like police were kind of uh, working with those protesters as long as it stayed peaceful. They were going to work with them. Police and protesters did go home right before 10 p.m. And they say they have more tests, protests rather, scheduled for the rest of the week. Back to you, Mark. Boy, that moment, super powerful. Hope to see more moments like that, less tear gas in the coming days. We did see a huge protest in Denton as well yesterday. Hundreds marching in the square there. Those protests appeared mostly peaceful. Denton does have a 9 p.m. curfew. There were still dozens of folks protesting past that curfew, but police stood by watching, not interfering. And over in Collin County, some video that was captured by our friends at Texas Metro News and the Garland Journal. About 500 people showed up at the Warren Sports Complex in Frisco and peacefully marched there. Uh, all right, there have been a lot of breaking developments, though, across the country as we get to Cleo Green, who is in our newsroom with details on those. Cleo? Hey there, Mark. You know, across the country, tensions continue to escalate overnight and into the morning, even though curfews have been enacted by state and city officials. So let's begin with what's happening out in St. Louis. Four police officers were shot downtown during violent protests last night.
They're expected to be okay. St. Louis police chief, well, he said that the shooting was carried out by cowardly individuals. Nearly 200 agitators throughout the night were throwing rocks, breaking into businesses, stealing, shooting fireworks at officers, and dumping gasoline on them. In Louisville, a black restaurant owner was shot and killed by law enforcement as they broke up a crowd early Monday morning. Now, we're learning no officers present had their cameras activated. This case is now in the hands of the FBI to figure out what exactly happened. The mayor there has since fired the police chief and let's take you back to the Twin Cities one week after George Floyd's death in Minneapolis police custody his brother Terrence Floyd showed up at his memorial site and called for peace at this rally Terrence asked people to protest but stop destroying their communities to Shara Terrence also asked people to get out and vote educate themselves and demand justice peacefully